Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be a quick one. It's going to be on Rise Up or Repent. There's a lot of uh, what they call truther sites that are trying to wake people up, they say, and have them rise up against tyranny, against this coming, um, well, what we in the Bible, who believe the Bible and know that uh, one day there will be the one world beast system of the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. And what they want to do is wake everybody up and rise up against the beast. Um, so is that a plan that's going to work? Well, there was a guy named Lenin. No, not John. He wasn't a beetle. But uh, Lenin, you know, Marx, Lenin, Trotsky, real name Bronstein, um, Stalin, you know, the communist Lenin. He said the best way to lead, uh, the best way to control, the best way to control the opposition was to lead it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, they lead the opposition and always lead them into a dead end that goes nowhere. So when Jesus came to the earth, he was living in the time of the Romans. Now, the Romans were not exactly a godly people, right? And the Caesars, they were all a bunch of heretics for the most part, I'm sure. Did Jesus ever say, oh, rise up against the Romans and let's overthrow them and bring in God's kingdom? No, he never did. There was a um, on-point preparedness who's got some decent videos, uh, just did a video on that uh, the so-called pregnant female over in Australia that was arrested for a Facebook post. She wasn't inciting violence. And uh, supposedly they had a warrant. They went into her house. I mean, they, were, they videoed the whole thing, and the video went viral. And they arrested her, a pregnant woman, for making a, a post saying that, you know, Australia's draconian, fascist, communist-type laws, you know. So, uh, and it goes viral. Well, on pre preparedness, uh, looked into it, found out who she was. She's a witch. She's a self-professed witch on her face fake book page. So... This woman, is she's going to lead us to where? You know, when she gets out of jail or whatever, and she becomes a media celebrity, and her, her uh, video goes viral, and she's going to be a public figure. Where is she going to lead us to? Witchcraft. The god of witchcraft, Satan. She's most certainly not going to lead us to Jesus. You know, rise up against what? What are they rising up against? The very system that they support. The best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves, right? In the 1950s, uh, communist Russia, after they got through fighting Germany, they took all of Eastern Europe, and the United States and England let them do it. Of course, Communism was born out of Wall Street, New York City, to begin with. Um, think about Wall Street bankers like Goldman Sachs. Yeah, the man with the gold. Um, find out, get the book Behind Communism by Frank Britton, B-R-I-T-T-O-N. And then look up all the names in a modern you-know-who encyclopedia. Yeah, but the... But, but the point is, all these countries were, uh, the United States let the Russians have these countries, like Poland, Ukraine, Czechoslovakia. Now, 
the uh, I forget if it was Voice of America or uh, Radio Free Europe, or maybe there's more than one. I, I mean, you're talking back in the 70s. I don't remember. And I don't want to look it up. But we had um, radio stations that would um, broadcast into Eastern Europe and in their languages and let them know news and this and that and the other. But they were controlled opposition, too. But in I think it was Czechoslovakia. Uh, the radio st American military-run radio stations or government or U.S. government-run uh, radio stations told them, "Rise up and revolt! We'll support you. We'll come in and help you out." Well, guess what? They rose up, they overthrew, and got rid of them for a few days, and then the Russians brought the tanks in, and everybody that was involved, <clears throat> the Russians killed. All the opposition was dead. Basically, all the radio station did was have them rise up so that they could identify who was behind what, and they got rid of them permanently. And after that, no more uh, rising up. So rise up or repent. Yeah, you know, um, there was some people that didn't want to let the Russians have Eastern Europe, but... Uh, you know, they sold they sold us on, well, you know, we just fought a war and we don't want another one. So they abandoned Eastern Europe, which was probably the most Christian in a lot of ways, to the communists. The best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves, right? Um, look at the... Uh, you know, you don't like the Democrats? Well, here, we got a Republican for you. But guess what? Same basic uh, principles. I mean, it's always support for foreign wars to benefit that little country in the Middle East. It doesn't benefit America. It doesn't be benefit the average American citizen. No. It's like two sides of the same coin. Heads, they win, and tails, we lose. And... Um, so, what are they telling us to rise up against? You know, if you've got witches telling us, oh, rise up, maybe they want to have the powers that, um, you know, to be, to um, I'd be able to identify those that won't go along with the plan so that when the time comes, they can um, get rid of the opposition. What do you think? That's just my two cents worth, which back when I was a kid would have bought six Tootsie Bars, by the way. Yeah, two pennies, six can, uh, six Tootsie Bars. Not the big ones, but the little ones. Well, the little ones are about, uh, about the size of, you know, might be a, a guy's little finger. You know, it's a mouthful. Now a penny's useless, but... Uh, all right, so rise up against what? Against the mass and the draconian member, uh, uh, draconian measures. So did Jesus ever say rise up against the Roman Empire that was evil? No. What did he tell tell him? Well, before we look up what Jesus said, let's look up what John said, who was the, uh, well, the one that was the laying the foundation for the way for the Messiah to come. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Okay, John said to repent. What did Jesus say about John? Luke 7, 28. For I, Jesus, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater than John the Baptist. Oh, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Now, what does repent mean? 
Well, there uh, some people will try to compare God repenting with our repenting. He's going. They're going to try to muddy muddy the waters there. The Lord is a sinless being that said sometimes that, for example, in Genesis 6, it repented him that he'd made man. He felt sorry because he had made man because of all the trouble that uh, the fallen angels had made, it, made for him. But he allowed it to happen. But they want you to think repentance to the Lord and repentance to mankind means the same thing. Uh, is mankind sinless and doesn't, you know, just needs to change their mind like the Lord? Or do mankind have to have sin that they need to repent of and turn away from? Well, there's a very famous preacher in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, and that's what he teaches. He says, well, you know, repent just means to, you know, change your mind. Change your mind from be not believing to believing the gospel, you know, you don't have to turn from your sin. That's not what it means. Well, Revelation chapter 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Uh, do you ever heard of the book of Ephesians? Well, guess what? Paul wrote that to the book of Ephesus. I mean, uh, to the church that was at Ephesus. So, he's writing... Revelation right here, uh, Jesus speaking, words of Christ in red, he's speaking to uh, a letter, a writing for the church at Ephesus. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth, holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thus and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And of course, they'll uh, try to tell you that, that they're talking about Paul here, but doesn't say Paul, no, no. Only in their mind does it not say, you know, does it say Paul. Verse 3, And has borne and has patient for my name's sake, for my name's sake has labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. I, you know, you guys are doing okay, but I got, I got a complaint. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left, left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Repent. Uh, Jesus is telling the believing church to repent. Repent of what? Their unbelief? I thought it was a believing church. How can a believing church repent of their unbelief? You see, these famous preachers are liars. They don't... They have to be liars. I mean, how can you hold yourself up to be a Bible teacher and a preacher and not know this stuff? They have to be deceivers. They have to be. There's just... There's just no other way around it. Remember, therefore, from once thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. All right, so, do you get the idea? In uh, Matthew 3, 8, John said to the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, probably, he said, bring forth, therefore, fruits or works, bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Matthew three eleven, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
Does he want you to change your mind? Yeah, about sin. Matthew 9, 13, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Sinners to repentance. No, he's not calling unbelievers to believe, like Stephen says in Arizona. No. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What do sinners do? They sin. They do evil things. He wants them to repent. He wants them to become righteous. He's not telling the unbelievers to become believers by repenting of their unbelief. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Verse 21. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, woe unto thee Bethsaida. Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So does God want us to believe in sackcloth and ashes? Read about repent, um, fasting sackcloth and ashes in the Old Testament. It was always grief over wickedness. Always, always, always. Now you can read Matthew 12, 41. The men of Nineveh, uh, Juna, Jonah and the whale, right? The men of Nineveh shall rise and up in judgment against this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold a greater than Jonas is here well they didn't just believe they turned from their wickedness that was in their hands read the book of Jonah I'm not making this stuff up uh, how about Mark 1 4 John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of unbelief? No. And preach the baptism for the repentance for the remission of sins. Ugh. Mark 2.17. But uh, when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mark 6, 12. And they went out and preached that men should repent. If, they, if it meant believe, he would have said believe. Okay? They be, you know, there's a difference between believing and repentance. Like in Matthew 21, 32. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness... Now, this is Jesus speaking. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterwards, that ye might believe him. If repent and believe meant the same thing, uh, you know, two different words, people. Come on. All right, how about Jesus again? Luke 13, 3. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Luke 13, 5. Jesus says the same thing again. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Like I've said a bunch of times, when I was in college, when I heard the professor say the same thing more than once, I wrote it down, memorized it, because it was going to be on the test. Luke 13.3 and Luke 13.5, Jesus says, I tell you nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Luke 15.10, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Oh yeah. Acts 2.38, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the 
Holy Ghost. Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. In Acts chapter 8, um, I think it's Simon the Saucer asked, uh, offered, I think it was Peter, one of the apostles, um, some money for the gift of the Holy Ghost so that he could do miracles. What did, uh, what did they tell him in Acts 8.22? They said, Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Repent of your wickedness. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, so should we rise up or repent? Think about it. You know, uh, in Romans 2 and verse 4, we read, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Do you know it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance? The goodness of God. Wow. Revelation 2.21, talking about the Jezebel, the prophetess. Jezebel's never mentioned nicely in the Bible. Never. That I know of. Uh, she was having, she was seducing uh, the Lord's people, whether it was spiritual, physical, or both, I don't know. But in Revelation 2.21, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, not her unbelief, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great, great tribulation, except they repent of their unbelief, no, deeds, except they repent of their deeds. Revelation 3.19, as many as I love, speaking of Jesus, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Oh boy, he must love me. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Repent of what? Your unbelief? Huh. Revelation 9.20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, this is the tribulation period, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of, their, of the works of their hands, that they should not, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Uh, can you see, when the Lord's talking about repentance to mankind, he's not talking about on changing your mind from unbelief to belief. I'm sorry, Stephen, in Arizona, you're wrong. And I'm happy to point it out. But So, are we going to rise up against tyranny? Or are we going to repent? I think we should repent. John the Baptist said to, Jesus said to, you know, they're just... They want to see who the troublemakers are, who those are not going to go along with the program. Of course, Christians aren't going to go along with the program if, if they're truly in Christ. But uh, you want to rise up with uh, witches and um, all these other wicked people? Uh, not me. I'm going to pass. Um, how come all these leaders are always ungodly, evil, wicked people? Oh, that's right. Lenin. The best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by 
me. I don't want to follow a witch. I'm sorry. I got close to that when I was in the new age uh, in the late 80s. I left that mess. I knew exactly where it was leading to. Sounded kind of interesting, you know. Uh, but it sounds good, but it leads to nowhere good. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. In His precious name, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. Amen.